Welcome to the Golden Gate Gaming Podcast, week number 10. We made it, guys. We made it. 10 weeks. This week, I am joined by Michael again. For some reason, he's back. And <laughs> yeah, Patrick I, know, I never and learned. Ray. Uh, yeah, he is. <laughs> Apparently, he didn't take enough punishment the first time. No, he won more. Hopefully, we won't be punishing him too much, because that's a little bit of... It's, you know. it's well. It's slightly lighter on the PC technical specs this time. Slightly. Yes. Slightly. <laughs> won't be as won't be as much. Just like you know, talk about about part. a certain so, game. There was some stuff that came out, so I'm sure it'll be a little bit. <laughs> and there's stuff coming out in the next two days. Yeah. Uh. Oh, exciting! 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 <laughs> oh yes. Uh. There's not a lot that happened this week, but there's some stuff we can talk about. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, I keep re- see. I saw that article about what you the first topic you have listed the SNES games found. Yeah, w- I might as well start there. There's uh, if you haven't heard, there's this uh, SNES like archiving project going on, where they're trying to scan and upload every SNES game. Oh wow! And Jeez. a collect a collector of SNES games sent. Uh, I think it was ten thousand dollars worth of SNES games to another guy Which, who yeah. was doing the scanning, or you know, whatever, backing up, and they got lost in the mail. That would that would have pissed me like, off to no end. Finding out, like, yeah, we don't know where your package of games are. Sorry. Yeah, and that guy just had to had to be like, yeah, I guess uh, the project's dead then because we don't have we don't have the stuff. Um. What was his name? Byu. B-Y-U-U. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, what day was it? February 23rd, the package arrived with every single game intact. That is, is a amazing. miracle. My God. It technically is, considering the fact that it's like, oh, um, hey, here it is. We just had it at the dead letter office for God knows how long, and sorry, my, our bad. Yeah, they they like they just found it. It had gotten just it literally just got lost. It didn't like get damaged or broken. It just got lost. It got put somewhere in a USPS office and just misplaced. Ten thousand dollars worth of fucking games. Can you imagine Ridiculous. being the guy that misplaced that? Like ten thousand dollars worth of games and you can fucked you be. Up. Can you imagine being the guy who had to deliver? It? It's like oh my god. Or being at the door and the guy like screams like, "Oh my God, you found the games!" And you're like, "What the hell is in this package?" <laughs> it's like you're carrying ten thousand dollars worth of equi- uh, like general uh, games and all that. It's like, okay, take it. I'm getting out of here. Bye bye. <laughs> Apparently, it, it was lost um, at the Atlanta Recovery Center, which is where lost mail goes to be placed up for public auction. The dead letter office. <laughs> exactly what I just said. <laughs> it's just like. Uh, God, that sucks. But the <laughs> the project is alive. They're going to wow. be able to grab those games and back them up and hopefully have a full archive of all the SNES I games. Like, uh, this, awesome. I like this little quote he has at the end. With these games recovered, I'll declare the preservation project undead. I thought that was really Yay. cute. <laughs> so it's like, it's a zombie now. Zombie Ooh. project. With a little Yay. happy face. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's yeah, it's exciting, and I guess also in old games news, uh, there was a streamer who recently uh, finished going through the entire catalog of the NES. He has beaten every single game released for the NES. Jeez, that's <laughs> which is pretty a uh, pretty hefty. I think it was something like seven hundred games. Oh my god, seven hundred and forty-two or something. I think. Yeah. Just a lot of games, but I mean NES games are also shorter. Yeah, they're true. Small tiny cartridges. But, but some of those games don't have a save point in yeah. the system, which would suck if you had to stop. It's like I gotta play this game all the way through in order to actually complete it. Cause like He's I, streaming. He's used to playing games in long sittings. Right, because I remember my the Roadrunner game did not have a save system. <laughs> and that game is so hard to do, and it's only like eight nine levels but it is so freaking hard listen yeah, there's a lot parents of... had it rough <laughs> <laughs> excuse you i have my snes still all right 
All I've right, here comes another old man Patrick <laughs> moment. Oh, shut up. <laughs> old man All right. Patrick going to talk about his SNES. <laughs> that Riley just was a boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Makes me want to fucking stab you both right now. You had to walk five miles to get a video Emily game. It just seems like another thing of Gallica, but fancier. Oh. <laughs> Gallica. Hashtag millennial Patrick. Love it. You're going to get the new Nokia 3310 that just got announced? I saw that. I was just like, what the shit? Why are you the going? The updated the classic phone. No, I, well, I, I guarantee you I'm going to see like fucking hipsters buy that shit just to 100%. say like, oh yeah. I have this shit, and then they'll still have an iPhone for the fact that they need a smartphone and all that bullcrap. But I'm like, Nokia, l- explain to me why the fuck you would remake a, your old brick phone into like some weird updated version that makes no sense. It's only fifty bucks. So it's because nice it's the indestructible phone. Okay, so it's, it's also, fifty it's bucks and not. it's throwaway money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's also not Nokia that's making it because Nokia doesn't make stuff anymore. Well, they do. They're Ooh. they're nope. no. There's the wait. The, who's making the P1 that they've? Uh... Nokia sold their name to HMD, who is making all the new phones. Oh, okay, gotcha. Bunch of sellouts. It's not actually Nokia doing it. It's another company. Mm, similar to how uh, BlackBerry. They didn't announce that phone though. They announced all the other Nokia phones, but not that phone. Mm, okay. I still think it's not gonna be anywhere near what the leaks are saying because the leaks are stupidly ridiculous <laughs> and then like eight and, gigabytes of ram yeah mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it shits on us like yeah we ha- you know those leaks you've been hearing yeah they're all true it's like Wah-ha. it's gonna be twelve hundred dollars <laughs> yeah if it's at that price range then it's like i'd rather buy a acer predator x34a monitor instead of a phone <laughs> I'll get more fun out of the freaking monitor than the phone. Oh my god. Because that's, yeah, no, if it's at that, if it has those type of specs, then it's going to be priced over the top. Ridiculous. I mean, phones in general right now are overly priced like crazy, but yeah. <sighs> that's the that's the market of mobile devices these days. Yup. I remember. Hooray. I remember I didn't have a cell phone until I was in high school. <laughs> I didn't have a cell phone until I was in middle school, and even then, I had a I had a Motorola a Motorola Razor. You had a color screen. <laughs> yep. You had a camera. Yep. I was privileged. All right. You know what? You know what? Fucking a- Ugh, goddamn age. Oh, I had a man, sidekick Patrick. for my first phone. I you know had. What? Everybody had sidekicks. I never had a sidekick. I had, I had sidekick. a phone that had a green screen. It had snake on the goddamn thing, and you had to T nine text. Okay. okay old, old man. Old man Chill Patrick. Out. So shut the fuck up. I had Make a full me. keyboard. On yeah, mine. Riley had a full keyboard on his, <laughs> and his thing would flip sideways and shit. <laughs> I wish I had the damn sidekick, but no, I was stuck on singular wireless of all places. Ah, uh, singular. Listen. Haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> Actually, since See, that's Riley how... fixed my phone, I haven't heard that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God damn it. Yeah, Ma Bell is sucking them all back up. <laughs> uh, all right. Back to games, though. Yes, back to games. <laughs> yeah. This is a gaming podcast. Is gaming and tech. a gaming podcast. Gaming and tech. <laughs> All right. Um, um, yeah. Then there should be in the title. Eh, whatever. Uh, we'll fi- we'll figure it out. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I really love that's super cool that those new planets that NASA yes. found were already in Elite Dangerous, and now Elite Dangerous is going to go and fix the small little things that were wrong about that system. They had. Uh, uh, I don't know if it says in, says in the article. Yeah. They had a brown dwarf as the star instead of uh, the other color star. White thing. dwarf? Yeah. Or red dwarf? Mm-hmm. Yeah, red. Red dwarf. Yeah. That's actually in the Trappist hmm. system. And, and then they had the same number of planets and the. Like, the three of which are position. possibly habitable. Possibly. Yeah, it's, yes. no. yeah, so so they're updating the star and updating the planets to be, you know, more closely closely aligned to what they found. Mm-hmm. Which will be pretty cool. 
Unfortunately, it'll take us... Uh, what was the calculation <laughs> I found? Um, I mean, it's, it's 39 light years away, so... Yeah, it would take us nearly... T I think it was, like, with the fastest possible speed that we can that that we can go which is like 32,000 miles per or kilometers per second it was like almost 10,000 years or something Jeez. i think technically to get there unless we discover yep. warp speed travel by the time you know within whatever i mean if we're able to develop you know half of light speed travel then we can go to that system in like 80 years <laughs> half a light speed travel I, well then that would technically make us be able to get to there almost in 20 years no 80 years right because it's it's 40 light years away so if we're going half light speed it's 80 years right no it would half be life. half it would be half the speed you were, if you're going half the speed of light that would mean that you're cutting the time off in, oh no, oh, you know, you're right, you're right. I you're, love math. You're going half the speed of... I'm going... Sorry, the math is going backwards instead of forwards. Never mind. Yeah, you're right. It's 80 years. Yeah, 80 years. <laughs> Space. Cool. It's like, if the math works the way you're saying, let's just go quarter of light speed then, then we can go there in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I... Why did no one think of this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know maths somehow. Some, some bits. We solved the space race. <laughs> we did it, guys. I want to alert NASA. Uh, uh, they wouldn't want to hire us. Too true. Yeah. Oh, too. so what are your qualifications? Oh, we run a gaming podcast from California. <laughs> N yeah, next. <laughs> There's other qualifications. What are qualifications? Oh, yeah, I, I live like two blocks away from NASA. I mean, that that's nice, right? It's like that. I, I know people that work at NASA. <laughs> Does that work? I don't think that's how it works. No. Nope. <laughs> It does it uh, does get you connections in some cases though? I, I found that out. Yeah, connections are useful, but so how about that? Uh, not quite for a high level NASA position. How about no, that target? Of course not. I don't want to be in a high level NASA position. Are you are you kidding me? No, never mind. It's like yeah, you're in charge of uh, you know hitting the button that launches the rocket. It's like you don't want me to do that. No, no, no. You don't want me to touch the button because I'll especially if it's a big red button, you'll be like. No. Spice. No. Please don't. I, I, it's like premature launch. It's like, no! It's like, ten, nine. Oh, the rocket's going. Uh, <laughs> everyone looks at you. It's like, sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> it was just, it was so big and red, and just, I had to press it. It's yeah. It's only a monkey. It's, but still, it's a big, but it's a big red button. It's so, and it's glowing. It's like, oh my god, I, I gotta press it. I mean, no. Yeah. Make a note. Uh, keep big red buttons away from. Mm -hmm. Make make sure there's not a big red button on the podcast where Patrick <laughs> can press it to stop. Yeah, it. make sure make sure the podcast kill switch isn't a big red button. Like a small yellow button. A small why yellow. Be, hey, because why is it gonna be yellow? It's that racist. First, what? That was the first color I thought of. How, what well, are how, you talking about? Uh, it is. It's just a yellow button. Why? How is that even good of a race joke? I don't know. <laughs> that wasn't even like good. That was just. Yeah, well, that let's was throw race into it. Oh my god. Anyway, low energy. So, uh, Sad. target leaks of Shadow of War. How about that? Shadow. You mean Shadow of Mordor? No, Shadow of War. That's the name of the sequel. Shadow of Mordor 2, Shadow of War. Oh, okay. The movie, yeah. the game. Looks <laughs> The game based on the movie, based on the book. Meh. Shadow of Mordor 2, Shadow of War. I mean, I haven't personally played the game, but, I mean, leaks are at this point common now for video games, so... <laughs> cool? What? Right? No. No I one can keep their big noticed. fat mouths shut. No, no one can. It's like, oh, I'm working on this. It's like, oh, you are? Are you? Tweet about it, like, off to the side. It's like, tell me more about this game you're working on. It's, it's, yeah, no. No, some, I can't, no one can keep their mouth shut at a developer, and they'll just be like, it, or, or it's a marketing ploy, like, let's just slowly leak this little bit of information out to let them know <laughs> we're doing something, and we're not just and sitting on our asses collecting paychecks. And then we're going to act like we had nothing to do with it. 
Ex yeah. I mean, there are some companies that have done that as a marketing ploy, and it's like, it's it's and it's worked for them in a good way. Yeah, like it's an it effective brought, marketing ploy. Right. I mean, yeah. look at Deadpool. Deadpool had the best marketing. <laughs> and Lo Logan is doing some really good marketing as well. Logan, Logan is, is yeah. doing very Lucky well awesome for marketing. like for in to in terms of like sales and everything for tickets and all. I'm super well, excited to see yeah. that movie. I'm hopefully going to be able to go see it when I'm in Vegas, but I don't know if I'll have time. I'm yeah, well, so excited the, for the it. The talks, the, the talks are that, you know, it, it might just be the first comic book movie to get an Oscar. It, it's <laughs> not, but it's not in the... Yeah, it, it's, it's not... It's not in contention for even an Oscar at this this year. It's, it's, it wouldn't be also, for this Suicide, year. It'd be for next Suicide year's Squad Oscars. just got an Oscar. Yeah, yeah Suicide it's Squad a, that's just a comic got movie. an Oscar. <laughs> So, I mean, for best picture. <laughs> you yeah. should have led with that first. You should have listened. Led There's here. lots of Oscars. Yeah. Well, yeah, but what's the what's the Oscar everyone cares about? Who won best picture? That's it. That's all There's, everyone cares about. I'm no. sorry. I like to know who won best featured animated film. Who, uh, best actor, like best, best supporting score. actor, all those other important fucking Oscars. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> You're fucking like, dumb. Best soundtrack? Like, best original soundtrack? Like, are you fucking kidding You're me? You're so fucking stupid. And just to clarify, it wouldn't even be nominated this year. It would be nominated next yeah, year. Because we this know. year's Oscars are from movies in 2016. We know. Well, somebody said it wasn't even in the Oscar nominations. And I'm like, well, no Because shit. you aren't clear. You again, you should have led it. off. <laughs> you should have led off. I'm with so sorry that I need It can be in nomination contention for next year. I'm so sorry that I need to hold your hand. Fuck you. Just shut up. We have fallen into, into chaos. God. I told you this well, is considering also the fact that hold on a sec, hold on a second. Let me double check. Um, Logan's supposed to be released this Friday, correct? Yeah, it hasn't yeah. Even yet. yeah. So again, March whatever you need you need to clarify first off because there have been screeners for Logan and all that. Yes, there have been, and there have been very the. I think it was already released last week internationally. Or is it the week after that it gets released? It's got real good reviews so far for yeah. people that have seen it. Yeah, even oh. freaking Rotten Tomatoes rated it at like a 93 or 98 oh percent. 96. God. That's yeah. It is that is rare for a first off for a Wolverine movie yeah. and rare for an X Men Marvel film. A well, Fox also Marvel film. you gotta also kind of think how much of it has to do with the whole you know it's the last movie for both Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart. It doesn't matter on that. It really doesn't. It's the fact that of the matter that X-Men films... It kind of does. To some no, people. it doesn't. It well, does. It's, the thing is, it's the last movie for both of them, which is, you know, cool. They're pulling out all the stops. Yeah. Uh, Hugh Jackman took a pay cut so they could bump it up to R because Wolverine should be rated R. Yeah. It's fucking Wolverine. Exactly. And, and it's never been R before. Now it is. And so that's awesome. So they're trying. They're trying to essentially. Deadpool was the first one of the first movies that, like, in the mainstream of current media, was rated R, because you know Ryan Gos or Reynolds. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Gosling. Yep. <laughs> Ryan Gosling. They look almost identical. Whatever. <laughs> what? Um, no, they don't. <laughs> they sort of do. No, Way to stereotype do. white guys. <laughs> I'm white. I can do that. <laughs> no, you can't. Yes, you can. <laughs> Anyways, anyone can. Deadpool. Deadpool was the I think one of the first comic book movies in current media that was rated R, and then they saw how well that did. They were like, "Hmm, we should really rethink some of our movies and kind of get them a different rating and yeah. pull out more stops." Hugh to Jackman get them, like, even took a pay cut so they could bump it up to R. Yeah, which I applaud him for because he, you know, he does get royalties off the other Wolverine movies that get played on TV constantly. Yeah. So I mean, I would I would take a pay cut too. It's like. You know what? I've been playing this character for freaking 13 plus years. I will take half the money that I normally would make off this movie just so you can like do more shit to it and get it to be rated R. I don't care. He wanted it to be a fitting send-off. He didn't want to have his last Wolverine movie just be another blah. Yeah. I mean, he wanted it to be fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, I I loved it. I loved it when Deadpool was in La La Land. I'm gonna have to fact check you there for a moment, Patrick. There has been another movie rated R for comic books. Yeah. Watchmen. There's been a few comic book movies rated R. Uh, Kick Ass, Kick Ass Two, Sin City. 
The Punisher Boy trilogy. in 2004. Um, that's off well, the top Sin of the Sin City a Marvel the property? Uh, yeah, I, I'd say Sin City is comic book. No, is it a Marvel property? Oh, though? no, the, no, the, it's not Marvel. It, it's the first mainstream Watchmen. blockbuster Watchmen's DC. Yeah. comic movie. Well, none, of, none of those were, like... The big, you know, DC and Marvel Watchmen. ones. Watchmen. They're DC. You know. Watchmen is DC. Yeah, but Blade. it's not. It's Marvel. not a big, you know, big, well-known blockbuster movie. Oh, everyone knows who people Blade is. know. People know Watchmen. I'll, I'll disagree with you there. Some people do, but well, it's not as much as Watchmen. Maybe the movie helped with that. I don't know. I mean, the movie, the movie. is the reason people know Watchmen. Yeah. Uh, very like the you know in, in nerd <laughs> circles yeah people know the graphic novel but I'm sorry I'm just laughing now because I'm picturing Deadpool in La La Land I, well, okay. I don't know why you would be cool. <clears throat> and, it's uh, funny great. to think and Watch, Watchmen made 180 million dollars which is a good amount yeah. Yeah. Deadpool Deadpool made seven hundred and sixty oh, million dollars. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh man. And also yeah. Kick Ass was also not well, Kick Ass wasn't based off a comic book, but I don't from what I can figure out, Kick Ass wasn't part of a main the Marvel or DC comic book companies, were they? No. No, it was an no. independent thing. Yeah, so but it did do good. Like it, the budget was about twenty eight to thirty million and it made ninety six thousand ninety six point two million. Oh, I mean it was a pretty true. good profit margin but again compared to what Deadpool made or used for budget on their movie and what they made in the box office totals that is a huge gap yeah yeah so I mean but anyways <clears throat> my movie talk yay I how the hell did Shadow I of Mordor s- though yeah <laughs> Shadow <laughs> of Mordor though <laughs> I'm super excited for it the first one was a lot of fun it had some cool systems and it had the the I can't remember what they call it. The an- it was the um, rival system. Rival system. The, yeah, thought it had something, some fancier name than that. No, it was, it was the rival system. My co- my supervisor okay. would not shut up about it. <laughs> that was that was a cool system, and I loved the like your the enemies getting like beefed up and moving through the ranks and stuff. Have you killed other ones? And oh yeah, had, had pretty satisfying combat as well. The the end wasn't super great. <coughs> not, not, did not Shadows of Mordor ha- it had DLC to it, right? Yes. Yeah. Had a few. Okay. I haven't played any of the DLC. I played uh, gotcha. some of it. Pretty good. Pretty good. Mm. Yeah, and it's supposed to like tie in somehow, or does it tie in at all into that universe? Into the um. I don't believe oh nemesis system that's what it was called oh right right okay. thought it had a fancier name nemesis. nemesis sort of fancy sort of <clears throat> instead of saying uh, enemy it's fancier nemesis. than than rival <laughs> yeah true nemesis. the way that was said that was a little bit weird yeah <laughs> that was the point oh, boy. thanks Mm-hmm. You're welcome. So, what's this new studio um, from Ken Levine? Yeah, Ken Levine, a famed game developer that developed uh, Bioshock, is uh, opening a studio. It's called a uh, Ghost Story. Okay. And they are specifically not working on a Bioshock game. Oh. Damn it! <laughs> well, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I like this the atmosphere though of the Bioshock games. They're working on a new immersive sci-fi game with RPG elements, which is still in the early stages of production. That'll work. That'll that'll take. That'll give me a little bit of layover for, for those. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but he's yeah. So he's gonna build something new. Good. That's cool. That's cool. They got a cute little logo of a campfire for there. Their logo. It looked the moment I saw that logo, I'm like, um, "What game was it?" Uh, Firewatch. Firewatch for some reason. I love yeah. Firewatch. Yeah. Same. Such. I still need to play that game. Oh, it's so beautiful and like so amazingly it. immersive. Like I was stuck in that game. I, I don't. I just. It's nice and short as well. Yeah, it's a well, short game. I just game. got. I saw a clip where he's like on the radio. And he's like, "There's underwear on this tree. What? Where? What?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's near the beginning of the game. Okay. 
That's like less than an hour into the game, I think. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. It's got amazing voice acting between the two main characters. It's so good. Yeah, I've been meaning to play it. I think I'll probably cap uh, catch it on the uh, Steam Summer Sale or whatever random sale Steam's gonna push down my throat again. <laughs> I swear to God, it's just, it's, it's, it's like... That's Steam. That's every every week. Well, you yeah, know that many, is true. That's, you know uh, how many emails I get? Oh, a game on your Steam what, wish uh, list is for on sale. What really pushed me to play the game, though, was um, this video essay done by Satchel Drakes. If mm -hmm. anyone has heard of him, I kind of want to... He sounds familiar. It. He's uh, through normal boots, but... Um, he did this essay on how it is your game and how, like, once you're in it, you're in it. And, like, you just sort of fall into the game itself, like, in terms of immersiveness. And the music is just... I loved the music for it. I loved, um, I loved the voice acting. Honestly, I kind of want to link it to you because I kind of don't want you to wait. Because it's one of those <laughs> games where it's just like, oh, if you haven't played it yet, you need to play it. It's <laughs> yeah, just play it's it. It's so beautiful. I'll, I'll eventually get around to play, getting Accor it and playing it. According to howlongtobeat.com, if I watch takes four hours yeah, to beat. It's yeah, it's super short. Yeah, I've heard. Length of two movies. Or one really long <laughs> Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> yeah, Lord of the Rings does tend to run a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's because they want to provide the backstory on every single leaf I, in the universe. I don't need that. I really don't. This felt, leaf is special. Let me tell you why for the next 30 minutes. I felt really bad when I fell asleep during one of the Hobbit movies. I was like, oh god, what did I miss? I, it was a Nothing. midnight release. It was. I was really tired that day. I forgot why, too. Oh well. Uh, but yeah. So that's cool. I, I I mean I applaud Kim Levine for starting a new studio and developing a new game. It happens enough, but it'll it'll be cool. I'm excited to see what comes from him. I enjoy the Bioshock games, and I hope yeah. that he brings something similarly cool. Yeah, I mean if he's gonna if he's if he's describing it as like a small open world, I mean I that seems to kind of be half of the narratives of some of the games where it's like it's an open world scenario and you you create. The storyline, more or yeah. less. But that is that is pretty cool. I think you could make some cool stuff, and I'm excited to see. Mm -hmm. Moving um, on, let's yes. talk about the Nintendo Switch some more, because we always love talking about oh, the Switch. Boy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, when I was looking at the podcast topics, I got confused. I, I, I read it as Nintendo Switch 2, and I was like, wait, there's a second one? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, before the first one is released, they have announced the second Nintendo Switch. Makes sense. Before even Breaking get... news, you have heard it here first. <laughs> what? Tell cut me that more. out in post. We don't want to get sued. Don't cut that in post. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the real news is that when you throw everything on, on high settings and play Breath of the Wild, the N Nintendo Switch lasts about two and a half hours on battery. <laughs> Great. That's uh, good. Fun. That's good for a trip to LA. <laughs> now, I'm sure you can turn stuff down and make it last a bit longer, but yeah, it's not. It doesn't have amazing battery life, but it does have a USB-C port to charge from any uh, any old you know thirty dollar battery pack. that will charge it up, up a few times, so yeah, you should true. get a decent battery life. You know, so, or you could you know get a hundred fifty dollar razor battery. That, again, that's Kevin, not me. I said no. in the I know, I know it's not chat. You. I said in the chat, I would not. Gonna get, <laughs> um, when is this podcast going to get sponsored by Razor? <laughs> when or we get talk, popular talk shit on them. <laughs> no, so, okay. Um, I know USB-C is a thing. It. I'm still kind of boggled with what it can do. It is just like... I even, I even noticed that motherboards now are having USB-C, and... Cool, that's great. I don't have a single. USB-C is great. Yeah. I don't have a single device that uses it though. Like nothing I own. Not yet, but you will. But you will. <laughs> like what? Give me one thing right now that I would even possibly purchase that has a USB-C. Uh, Riley, needed, help me needed. out. <laughs> <laughs> monitor. What? It mo can do monitors. 
uh, like external storage. Okay. Things like that. Um, <laughs> VR could possibly be run through a single USB port. Because of the fact that it runs a higher um, data transfer rate? Yeah, USB C3 and Thunderbolt uh, gets, I think, 40 gigabytes per second transfer. Something yeah, like that. that sounds about right, actually. I did see um, when I was looking at motherboards before we started, like, oh, hey, USB, like, all the motherboards now are coming with a USB C plus, you know, 3.0. And all that other fun stuff. Though, though, Thunderbolt is Intel only. Oh. So, you won't get that. Mm. Unless unless AMD decides to uh, license the tech, which I haven't heard they have. No, none of the AMD boards, I think, have it. Now I think about it. No, you're right. So, you're, you're stuck to USB 3.1 speeds, which is still really fast. Um, USB 3.1 speed is... Something I think twenty, no ten gigabits per second, which is perfectly fine. I which mean, is real fast. Yeah, yeah. like I transferred uh. a cr- like already I transferred about twenty gigs into a four terabyte thing that runs off a of USB three point oh, and it took like twenty minutes, and I'm like, what in the shit? <laughs> it it was pretty quick. So, and um, with uh, USB C, you can double that. True. No, oh. sorry, you can. USB 3.0 is... No, that's not... They give me the wrong number big. <laughs> USB 3.0 is something bigger. No, it's USB. not telling me. Five <laughs> gigabits. There we go. Five gigabits per second? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yep, five gigabits per second. So double that with 3.1. Okay, that's not... That's a pretty big difference. I mean... It, it's just software update, right? Or is there like an actual? No, that's, it's hardware. Is a hardware difference too? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Um. But yeah, not like so. It the switch has the USB C port on it to charge for you know external battery packs, but it also can charge via the dock, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Because the dock has USB C connector for it. Oh, so the USB C connector is at the ba- like at the bottom if you're holding it in landscape mode. Yep. Uh, okay. I would assume it would be like on the sides or something. Well, no, no it's on the bottom. It wouldn't be on need to be on the side because you put the stupid Joy-Con controllers on the thing. Yep, because got to have space for those. Yeah, true. Yeah, the space on that console is at a huge premium. So. Pretty much. <laughs> Speaking of Joy Cons. <laughs> yeah, apparently there's been some glitching for the people that have an early uh, Nintendo Switch. They gave a few out to various YouTubers and games journalists so people could start playing them and putting up reviews and stuff. And uh, people have been reporting that their left Joy-Con has been desyncing and, like, getting all weird and shit. And uh, I hope they fix that. I hope it's a software problem and not a hardware problem. Because that would be uh, real bad. Yeah. If one of the main things of some of the games is motion controls, and the motion controls don't work. <laughs> it syncs up via Bluetooth, right? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Because I was with a friend of mine earlier, and we were talking about, because he's getting the Switch, and he says that he's also he's got the Switch, he's getting Breath of the Wild, and he's getting the pro controller for the switch oh. because apparently he told me the um the dot the little dock thing you put on your when you put the two joy cons on is a passive device and does not charge your joy cons while it's active which i found to be kind of stupid you can oh. buy it you can buy a dock that charges right but it's it's pretty much like you know you have the joy con you have the joy cons and the little thing in the middle or you can also get, you know, the 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 little pro controller that does the same thing, but you know, can it'll hold a, it'll last a little bit longer than you know docking the two Joy Cons into a broadcast like a similar broadcaster kind of de- or syncing broadcaster kind of device or something like that. It just that's how it seemed like to me. I was like, eh, whatever, spend an extra forty bucks on it. I don't care. It's your money. Yeah, 40 <laughs> Or 60 bucks. I don't know how much the thing No, the Pro controller is. controller is $80. Holy shit, never mind. <coughs> yeah, no, so my- 70 
70 or 80. I don't really remember or give a shit. Right. It's one of the two. Uh, should we bring Michael back in and <laughs> have him talk about this uh, article that I put in the doc for him? Oh. Yeah. Oh, well. no. <laughs> I, oh. It's fine. Oh. He says he's oh. over it. Oh. He says he's over it, but is he over it? <laughs> <laughs> and, Ray, and Ray's just going like, oh, God, why have you done this? I don't want to hear it. Why? Basically, there's a lot of stuff wrong with For Honor. Oh, we already knew that. Yes, we knew. Nothing was fixed. That's true. Yeah. Which, I mean... Listen, it's I'm not going to relive two weeks ago. I've moved past that game. <laughs> no, new leaf. It's 2017. Thank new year. It, we, the, we talked Thanks. about it two weeks ago. It was still 2017, so... <laughs> <laughs> Just let it. Just, just let him. Just let him. All right, whatever. Fine. I don't. We'll Basically, see. Rock Paper Shotgun published an article that's just like listing all the things they ran into uh, as problems and playing For Honor. And yeah, there's there's some uh, there's some issues in the game. There's lots of bugs, lots of weirdness with their multiplayer system, but. I think in a, in like six months or something, the game's going to be pretty cool if they can fix that shit. Because the base if. gameplay is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a big game. I thought that it was a pretty cool game. And it, it, it is it's a, a cool, cool game, game with some issues in the multiplayer mechanics. Sounds like every new game ever. I honestly. I stand by. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's got, a, it's got a bit more issues than most games have. But True. I, I stand by my, my, my rating of six out of ten. Which is fine. You're entitled to that opinion. I mean, most games when they come out on the market, how, here's have how you get issues. here's how you get a seven out of ten. You know, get rid of that peer to peer <sighs> server thing. Okay, the peer to peer server has been around for a very long time. It was in <laughs> Halo for God's sakes on the yes, on the three sixty. Why is it in a game for twenty seventeen? Because that's usually also the more stable connection. If yeah. the company doesn't doesn't have the money to you have server farms. To host these games, it's Ubisoft. Okay, it's they Ubisoft. have they have money, but the, or maybe <laughs> maybe the U, Ubisoft. Stop wait, no, Ubisoft's not a developer. Oh they, boy, they are. I mean, they still fund things like that. They do, but the thing is, like, they might put the um, the main mechanics of you know hosting the games and everything to the publisher, the developer themselves. It's like, yeah, you got you know you great made a great game. But we're not going to help you with the whole server farm hosting this thing. You can figure that part on your own. So it's like, all right, well, we have two options. Spend more money on creating server farms to host games, which may cause, you know, lag issues depending on where people are located. Or we can just turn someone's computer into the server on their computer and they host the game, which has been a thing for God knows how many years, which has worked. It sucks sometimes, but it works. Sometimes, but it's it's just it's not the preferable option, <laughs> right? But, oh well, they fucked up. Hopefully, they can fix it. I mean, it's not the same dev, but same publisher for uh, Siege had a lot of problems and fixed a lot of them. Right. What are you doing so. to the topic list? <laughs> He's just doing things. Don't worry about it. I'm just rubbing it a little bit. I just that was that was wrong. Mm. You should feel bad. Oh, no, yeah. please don't. Please don't. Uh, please don't. Any. I'm uncomfortable now. So now we're going into what I had mentioned before we even started the podcast, which now Michael's just going to be dead air again because he's not going to understand shit of what I'm about to talk about. <laughs> hey, 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 fuck you. <laughs> it's the comparison between Razer and Apple products. Because yes. bye. <laughs> because my dad owns an Apple product. I own Razer products. And we have fairly similar devices. Granted mine was a little bit more. Um so <laughs> I decided to look at Apple's newest it's a MacBook Pro or is it just called the MacBook? I don't remember. The MacBook is the shitty one. The MacBook Pro is one that's actually decent. 
Right. The MacBook, but is the Mac, is that the Mac new? The new one that's out is the MacBook. It's a MacBook Pro, right? Yeah, yeah the it MacBook is a Mac Pro is okay. along with the Touch Bar. Yeah. Okay. So I looked at the MacBook, the new MacBook Pro. I find it the most retarded as shit in the entire fucking world, because it's got the Touch Bar, kind of cool. Removed all the function keys. I granted, I also never use the function keys to any real extent. Uh, well, eh, I take that back. Outside of you know, volume control, backlighting, all that fun crap. They removed the escape button. They did, which I thought was really retarded. <laughs> but then, um, uh, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, they took everything out. They took. There's no SD card slot. There's no USB slot. There's two USB C slots. That's on the 13 inch, there's four on the 15 inch. Okay, whoop de doo, two more. <laughs> but it's just all USB C. So, like, it's it's like, oh my gosh, I was just. Uh, it bugs me. And that's where, when I was looking at the pricing for those versus the pricing towards, you know, Razer products, which are practic. Like, Razer is essentially trying to you always uses Apple because generally Apple is the more commonly used computer device for students, I believe, right? Yes. Am I wrong on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least when I went to college, it was most it was really common to see all over campus. And Razer is trying to get into that market where it's like, "Hey, we have a we have a PC, we have a Windows device that is as thin as a, a MacBook." has you know the all the same anemones as you know a normal windows pc and we still have usb and an sd card slot in our computers and we do have a usb c if you want to use usb c and it's just like the and i think the newer macbook pro the 14 inch 15 inch model is like two grand ish right or 1800 bucks i think because it also does come with flash memory, it comes with the newest, like one of the newer Intel Core i7 chipsets and stuff like that. Yeah. The razor, bl the newer razor blades have the exact. To answer <sighs> your question, it is um, about two thousand dollars. Razer kind of beats the shit out of that, where their pricing. Apple MacBook Pro Retina Display, 15.4 inch i Core i7, 2.2 gigabyte. Uh huh. And it goes, it's it, almost two grand. But again, there's it can have varying options depending on how much you want internal, the flash memory storage and all that fun crap. But like, I was looking at that and then I looked at the prices for, you know, the razor blades and all that. And I'm like, I'd rather go with something I know, which is Windows, and I'd rather go with the razor and blade. The razor blade is 3,700 for the Pro. If you get the Pro, which is a 17-inch laptop, which it is gigantic. Which is one they were... You know were... what else is gigantic? No. <laughs> My heart. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm, I was trying to compare it, like, towards the Razer Blade, which is their 14-inch comparison. And Shut the fuck up, Kevin. And <laughs> they, um... It's just funny how, like, you have all these, like, pro game... Pretty much pro game specs... And all that with still all the normal anemones that general laptops do still have and I'm like I'm sorry if I'm gonna go to college and I see a MacBook that pro a MacBook and all that that's like two grand versus you know the blade or even the blade pro for an extra thousand or for a slightly less pricing but the the level like the specs are almost identical or slightly better on the blade I'm gonna go with the PC the Windows PC versus the Apple device but that's just me. Like, I've been a P Windows user for, like, my entire life. It's only fairly a few years ago that we bought a Mac because my dad wanted to get a Mac, so. Yeah, you lose some stuff with the, with the um, razor blade, but you also gain some stuff with it. It's, yeah. It's just, it's a lot of, a lot of preference-based, and also, you know, what other stuff you have, because Mac stuff, you know, it works really well within its ecosystem. Yeah, you and got a I, bunch of it Apple works. Stuff, it works really well together. Yeah, it works good for like a lot of people that I know who were um, like video editors and photo editors and stuff like that. Graphics artists they usually go for the Apple because of the fact that their display is a lot better in terms of color uh, variations. Yep. 
But Apple always has really nice color displays. They do. Um, but I've recently seen more, like, a lot of professional photographers have, like, one I know that's really well known by a lot of people, Martin, uh, Martin Wong, he's a cosplay photographer. He actually has a razor blade and he uses that for his photo editing on the go when he's, like, on his trips and all that. And it's just like, it's just like, okay, if this really famous photographer is on a razor blade, I mean, there, I'm sure there's a pretty good reason why he picked that compared to, like, having a MacBook around. I mean, there's sh there might be reasons behind it. I don't know what specifically. I mean, if he wants to play games as well, then... I think yeah. I think he does. <laughs> I think that's <clears> the other point. the razor blade if you want to play any games. That is true. The, the Radeon Pro 455 and the MacBook Pro is dog shit. It is real bad. Right. I forgot real they bad. use Radeon graphics cards in their devices. Why the fuck are they that expensive then? If they use a Radeon versus an NVIDIA uh, graphics GPU. That doesn't make sense. Because of other stuff? I mean, <laughs> the uh, different, that's like a $200 difference. It's You're paying not for that. You're paying for the... The amazing trackpad, the great screen, the the engineering and the you know the super thin body, super light. Uh, it's incredibly portable. It's got the incredibly fast um, you know ports, those USB C ports, the right. Thunderbolt ports. Yeah. That you can connect you know full speed storage to, and have and also have you know like they have they have their little demo thing or example of two 5k screens and two high speed raid systems connected to right. the single macbook pro and it's just that's yeah. you can't do that with a uh, razor blade no unfortunately not at this current time i'm sure they'll develop it later on but i mean yeah no i mean i applaud apple does like i said app it's just benefits towards like what if you're strictly going to be using it for photo and videos and stuff like that with the portability or if you know you want to be able to play video games in your off time when you're not studying your ass off it's like oh i can play you know overwatch on this let's go play a little bit of overwatch or let's go you know chill with friends and like do a LAN party or something you know just yeah there's options yeah and it's uh you're not going to switch ever anyone over from from a MacBook by saying, oh, hey, this uh, Razer Blade has a NVIDIA G uh, graphics card instead of an AMD graphics card. That's no. not what people care about. No, yeah, nobody's no. going to care yeah. about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Uh, all right. All right. That was my little bit of rant between the comparisons. <laughs> that's all. It just bugged me for the last few weeks. I was like, I need to rant this out. Uh, but anyways, now to the next topic. Oh, boy. To the next topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know about this one. I had zero to oh, say Oh, Batman on that. game? New, uh, so, I saw, the, I saw an article. The article stated that, or the leak state, the article leak mentioned in the leak that the game is set three years after the last Arkham game, which was Arkham Origins, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, that's... Yeah. The, the, the timeline of those games is all mumbo jumbo because Origins is technically the first game in the series. And it's then, a prequel. Yes. Yeah. It's Origin, Asylum, and then City, and then Night. Well, in any case, I mean, it was that's three what years the leaks, after. Yeah, that's what the, the leak said. It said three years after the, or Arkham Origins, and it's titled Arkham huh. Insurgency or something like that. There was, like, I don't know if it was an artist rendition of... Set before, um, according to Kevin. Before? Yes. I saw after. Before? There's... there's I don't see how that's... Yeah. Origins is before no, the other games. That doesn't... Oh, Insurgency Kev, is after... No, Kevin was being yeah, dumb. Origins. Sorry, my bad. Origins... Because <laughs> Origins is year one Batman. Yeah. So, pretty much, it's... It's just a small leak. It's like, okay, great. They're making another Arkham game. We're going to get fucked as PC users again because that's how it works. I mean, if it depends on who they use to do the port. Because if they use the same people again, we're going to get yeah. fucked. If they learn from their mistake and use someone good, then we won't get fucked. Yeah, because, well, we, we've been... 
we've been fucked before with PC ports, like, multiple times. I mean, it's not an uncommon occurrence, it's just that Arkham Origins was unplayable practically for, or was it, yeah, it was Arkham Origins. Yeah. It was unplayable yeah. for practically almost a year, and still kind of is unplayable for I PC still can't players? play it, yeah. No, there's no saving that game. I didn't buy it. Yeah, I didn't buy it either, because, like, I most likely would have played it on PC, but I also didn't hear great, like, I'm her I'm sure it's great as a game, but I didn't hear great issue or greatness also, overall. Also, we're, we're totally saying the wrong game. Arkham Knight was the most recent game. Was it? Yeah. A oh. So, did the article say it takes place three years after Origins, or three years after it the It takes three game? places after Origins. After yeah, Origins, Origins. Okay. So it's Okay. That makes more sense. Glad we can clear that up. <laughs> the Arkham Knight was one that was complete dog shit. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, 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 no. For PC. For That's PC. That's what we were talking yeah. about. For, for PC. I, I, just, I just slurred there, and I don't know why. For PC. <laughs> you're, you're it's, still only, okay. it's only 20 okay. bucks on Steam, though. Yeah, but it's still unplayable. Yeah, it's still absolutely dog shit. For some people. It's not a for good game. For some people. It's not worth that <coughs> m amount of money. <laughs> if, on PC. If I really, really, really wanted to play it, I probably will buy it on console, try to beat it within seven days, and just return it to GameStop because. Um, well, the Arkham games are really good on console, but on it's PC, it's not, they're it's just. It's not a bad game, it's just if it doesn't yeah. work for you, it's bad. Yeah. But it, if you're it a does PC work gamer, it's bad. That's what we're yeah. saying. Yeah, I was just saying that. Yeah, but that's what like we're Arkham saying. City, Arkham Asylum, and Arkham City were perfectly fine on the PC, but then all of a sudden they switch to a different uh, company for porting it, and then it just goes to the complete and total dog yeah. shit, and you're just like, Dumb idea. Well, I'm done. Stupid idea. So, yeah. yeah I couldn't I couldn't play Arkham Origins at all. Yeah. It wouldn't launch. <laughs> it, yeah, it so. crashed for me several times. And then Ark Arkham Knight I just never bought, because Arkham Origins was so bad. Yeah. <sighs> oh, well. Yeah. It sucks. Well, maybe, maybe they'll go back to a good a good porter for Arkham Maybe. Insurgency, and I can actually play it. Maybe, hopefully. So, who the hell is talking about Metacritic being unfair about their reviews? I actually kind of want to talk about that. Yeah. What? Who? Who's? Who's open critic? I, I'm confused. And Riley's... Apparently, that's that's Kevin's topic. That is Kevin. Is it? Okay. I don't. I mean, Metacritic. I know there's some of their reviews have been kind of biased and dumb and retarded from journalistic point of views. I, I just like, I forgot what game it was that I mean, Metacritic doesn't do reviews though, do they? They uh, aggregate. They aggregate consumer reviews, right? Consumer rather than... Critic reviews as well. Oh, okay. That's, that's, see, but that's the thing. It's in the name, Metacritic. Oh, that's the problem though. If you're basing it off consumer reviews and also partially off. Well, you said no. They give it two scores. They give it a critic score and a consumer score. Uh, the critic score is the one that you see first. You have to actually like go into the film's page to see the consumer score. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the way they weight it may be real bad. Right. Because there was one I remember that kind of brought controversy to Metacritic. It. I don't remember which game it was, but like they. <laughs> They got a lot of flack for it because of the fact that a lot of games the, have gotten flack. The critic review was like super bad, but the consumer review was like way over the top. Yeah, a lot and of you, it. You, Ugh. And you see, that's why I can't give like there's certain people critic um, reviewers that do game reviews that I'll listen to their opinion and I'll try to watch the, some of the gameplay footage that they produce, but it's just like. Eh, I don't know if I really want to play the game unless you really give me a selling point. Like that's that's why like there's certain that's why like certain games don't hit it for me. That's what I I don't know. The thing with Metacritic though is it it it, it appeals to sort of the more commoner gamer where you could just look at a score and say oh okay it's got a 64 maybe not or oh okay it's a 75 maybe I will the the, the thing with it is if it's weighted so badly and it is it's it's not a good 
it, it does not have good weighting system. It is clearly biased. Um, it clearly yeah. favors bigger companies and local companies. It's about as helpful as Rotten Tomatoes is these days. And the, the problem with that is the common gamer is going to look at that and they're going to be like, oh, okay, I'll buy this probably shitty game because Metacritic says that it's good. And it's, it's definitely an ethics thing more than a gaming thing. But it, it definitely pisses me off because it's like, no, you should not right. be giving Didn't Metacritic money. give... Um, <laughs> I know you hate hearing the name. Oh, no. But... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they give, uh, or didn't the Metacritic score for, um, what's that game No called? Man's uh, Sky. Yeah. Didn't that have a high Metacritic <laughs> score in the beginning? It did. Yeah. That's because a lot of critics gave it a high score. Yeah, and then look what the fuck happened, yeah. like, a month later. A month fucking <laughs> It's later. like, because, because of the fact that the Metacritic score was probably a big selling point for a lot of regular consumers, like, oh, this is a high, like, a really high score from a lot of critics, I'm gonna buy this game. I knew it was going to be shit, because there's no way you can do a full open world scenario situation like that without, with certain key factors for exploring completely just not there, like, you know, being able to travel with friends and all that crap. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, that's why I saved myself from spending $62 from getting a shitty, shitty game. Well, Patrick, unlike you, I am an idiot. <laughs> But also, I have, I have like, really critical, like, um, game types that I do like. And I sometimes do get pushed into the overall, like, oh, get this game, it's going to be really popular, like, Overwatch. And it's just like, <laughs> oh. fine, I'll get Overwatch. And looks what, look what happens to me. I'm playing it, like, every freaking day. I barely play any of my other games that I own. Well, I mean, well, the I thing mean, with Overwatch is that it's, it's good. <laughs> Yeah, and it's addicting, yeah. and it's fun, and you're just like... And it's also made by people who actually, you know, give a shit about their fans. <laughs> that is true. They do constantly, constantly update. Oh, speaking of Overwatch, has anyone been in the PTR recently? Mm, I saw I the, the pictures of it. Yeah. The leaks. The, um... The hints, not the leaks. It's, it's a hint, and it's just like... Doomfist? Doomfist's, Doomfist's fist is missing. Listen, Doomfist? We, you, I, listen, Doomfist! I, I, think, I think we can... Let, let's not call him Doomfist. Doomfist, let's Doomfist, just, Doomfist. For, let's, just, let's just, for all intents and purposes, now just call it Terry Crews. Why? <laughs> he's, the, he's still Doomfist. Because he's Doomfist. everyone wants Terry Crews to voice Doomfist. Oh, okay. Now he I is voicing the character. Doomfist, he's going to be voicing a character. We don't know if it is Doomfist. But he is going to voice a character. Doom fist, Who else doom is he gonna fist, voice? Doom fist, doom fist. Anybody! Oh. They, they. This just in. Turns out Terry Crews is the new voice actor for Winston. <laughs> they would not do that. Go fuck yourself. You know they wouldn't do that. Terry Crews is the voice actor for that 11 year old girl Actually, that is from the AI stuff. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Riley. That's, that's Riley. Weird. He's can, can, voicing the 11 year old <laughs> child. <laughs> Riley, can you cut out that uh, Winston comment? I don't want people to label me a racist. <laughs> and then you say it again. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, good for you. Dude. Keep saying it. Oh my. <laughs> oh. Here's the shovel. Um, go dig your own grave. No, he he dug it and went six feet more. <laughs> um. Anyways, well, switching. Of Overwatch. Speaking of computer stuff again. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> G GDC is happening. Um, well, why don't we just. Do we already have another Overwatch topic on there? Why don't we just segue into that? Because we were already talking about it. What Overwatch topic? No one cares about the Dice Awards. I put the... Oh, yeah. Dice Awards, yeah. 2016, the year of Overwatch. We already knew this. Yeah. Like, they were going to win that it. that doesn't... We all... That it, it, doesn't mean we can't talk about it. We're a gaming podcast. We have to be in the know. What's there to talk about? We already knew. We knew it would happen. We expected it. Every single major outlet predicted it. It's done. Yeah. It, it, it's not exactly. news. <laughs> it, listen. Why, oh, listen. Listen. Listen here. Okay, then talk. Go ahead. We gotta break this no, down. No, don't. How do you have to break it down? There's nothing it's, to we knew why like it's oh I, you know what I'm, I don't I don't care I'm gonna I'm gonna stir up controversy no. don't even care 
Don't even oh, care. God. It, it, Overwatch 2016 Skyrim. What do what, what does any of does that, that mean? That makes um based um Skyrim, aka uh, the most award winning game of all time. So it's like the Skyrim of 2016. Okay. How would that stir up any controversy? Yeah, I really <laughs> don't get that at all. Like, because people don't like it when you talk about their Skyrim in a possibly negative way, and considering Overwatch has kind of a bad rap around it by people, you know. Does How it? does it have a bad rap it around it? Because, oh, look, it, it's got all these awards when it doesn't even have a story mode. It's I a read. well dev- it The only people no. saying that are I... idiots who live in their mother's basement. And plus, also, it is a hey, multiplayer it's not game. Nice to talk about me I like live that. in my mother's Vers- basement. Be quiet. There, it's a multiplayer game oh, that has been a well sold multiplayer game by a well known developer versus, you know, another. a single player game that's been made by a well known developer. And it's like you're comparing apples to oranges here. You're you're comparing two different games completely. It's like saying, um, "Why does Skyrim have all these awards when it doesn't even have multiplayer?" Exactly. You're. you're well, I mean, <laughs> you know. No, we don't. We That's really what we're trying don't. to figure it out. You can't just say you know. You can't just do that. <laughs> you, you I can't. just did. No, you you can't yeah. get away with it. It doesn't make it. I'm sense. looking oh. too bad. I oh. run this bitch. You really don't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Yeah, all. right. <laughs> okay, look, I'm looking at game of the. I'm looking at this list of that article you that was put in, like game of the year. Okay, Overwatch, Blizzard. All right, yeah. outstanding game direction. Inside, Play Dead. That's the makers of um, uh, what's that? Dark, that black um, game. I forgot what it was called. Inside. Uh, n- no, it was a. Uh, uh, it's that one really sk- weird, creepy game with the spider. Um, I forgot. Limbo? Yeah, Limbo. There we go. Same developer. Okay. Then you got, Great like, event. um, then you got, like, immersive VR game, or reality game of the year. Super hot VR, which I didn't know so that was even... Oh good. Oh, really? my God. I, that's such a good game. All right. Yeah, what is it, exactly? I don't even yeah. know. It's super it's hot super in hot, VR. But VR, okay. yes. Okay. It basically... You it's know, basically super if you want a right? game that utilizes VR to the fullest, super oh, hot VR. Oh, okay. I know, I know which one you're talking about now. I've seen gameplay of that. You know, it then sounds you got, like yeah, a porn you, game. Just, I'm just going to say it's a porn it, game. It, it does, kind of. Um, then you have, like, Outstanding Achievement, Overwatch. Great, Great. cool. Yep, that's that's, that's well deserved. And it's for an online game. That's for the Outstanding Achievement in online gameplay, which it is an online game. Yep. Then you have like you know racing game of the year for uh, Forza Horizon Three, Street Fighter for fighting game. You have family game which is Ratchet and Clank, adventure game. There was a Ratchet and Clank game out this last year. Yes. Yeah. Um, really? Really yeah. good. It was people that, still play that? Yes. People still people play it. Still play it. Oh. Then you huh. have like then you have like adventure game which was Uncharted Four: Thief's End. You have action game Overwatch, outstanding technical achievement Uncharted. You have outstanding achievement in story, Uncharted. I mean, they like. It sounds like Naughty Uncharted Dog, won just as much. It did outstanding achievement in animation, Uncharted. Yeah. So like, it, it's not Uncharted won a crap ton of awards as well as over as Blizzard or as Overwatch did. Overwatch so gets just as much. I just hype did as the counts. Deserves. All right. Yeah. I I counted. I have counted. <sighs> I got. I've done some counting. And. And. It's at 34 and counting, because it's still nominated for a lot more awards that aren't out yet. Okay. It makes sense that but it won are... 34 awards. It's a good fucking game. Yeah. You know what else is a good fucking game? What? Not For Honor. We weren't even talking we, about what? For Honor. Okay. For... <laughs> oh, God. Listen, I'm just trying to make the audience hate me so I don't have to come back. I feel like we all kind of hate you right now. <laughs> You know, I'm almost about to fall under my desk at this point from laughing. <laughs> if you don't want to see me ever again on this podcast, subscribe to the channel. <laughs> That's a weird if, marketing ploy. Okay. Anyway, if we get chance. speaking, if we get, yes? speaking, if we get a thousand subscribers, no, I will Try never show up on the podcast again. All right. Speaking of like 
um, awards or conferences and stuff, we have GDC coming up this week. Woo! And we have Yay. announced, from what I've been told, we're going to finally get uh, the new AMD Vega announced Vega, on in a couple Vega. of days. Yep. And I'm, if, my hope, my biggest hope right now is if it can rival close to the 1080 specs for, like, a decent price range, I will immediately jump to the Vega and... It drives like my monitor pricing choices like down by two hundred to three hundred dollars. I mean, it probably won't match Nvidia in the places where Nvidia did some really cool shit with power management. Yeah. Right. Because but if the it's Nvidia cars are so much less power, uh, you know, power hungry. But right. Vega but will probably be pretty good power or like you know, like oomph wise, it'll, it'll put out a lot of power. Yeah, if it gives me if it gives me close to the same specs as a 1080 card, like it, it would be perfectly fine. I would be perfectly fine to jump on that immediately and be like, and if the price point is right, I will I will be in front of the door like, give me it, give me now now. <laughs> Just watch out for it. It might be another heater like the other cards. <sighs> yeah, those cards were uh, real bad on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had an AMD card once, and that thing would fry super quick. And it was just like, ugh, this is so much power, and it's not even doing what it needs to do. Yeah, it does not work like it's supposed to work. It's like but I mean, watching arms AMD trying to has, like... Yeah, AMD has gone huge bounds compa with their Ryzen already. I'm sure their, their R&D department has done a crazy job like, hmm... Well, we've already pretty much are getting close to matching the specs to compared to Intel's processors currently. Let's see if we can kind of throw another wrench into the pricing wars and match close to a 1080 spec card and make it like half the price. Because that's what they're doing right now. <laughs> like honestly, you can, with proper cooling to the, X, the 1800X Ryzen um, processor, you can actually Turp, like boost the hell out of that almost to five gigahertz oh, wow. with proper cooling. I mean cooling. that that's with nitrogen. Right. It's not with something anyone's gonna use. <laughs> that's that's not anything new. It's not. <laughs> don't don't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we we have yet to see actual like you know what you can expect as a normal person. Right, and with real world comparisons, not like the reviewer models that get sent out to like Linus and all them. I would like. That's what my friends are waiting on is. Real world comparisons to Intel's um, yep. chipsets. Which they will uh, reveal on the same day they release them. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll see. A couple, a few days from now. Yeah, it's not a few that days far. From now. We'll see if we'll see if they can uh, start to regain some of the ground. Currently, from the latest Steam hardware and software survey <laughs> from January 2017, 21 point five percent of Steam users have AMD. Seriously? Wow. Wait, AMD yeah. graphics cards or AMD, AMD processors? AMD CPUs. Yeah, I'm, I'm in that probably in that little uh, that category probably, or and, most likely. Uh, High numbers. Twenty three point four percent have AMD uh, GPUs. Jesus Christ! Wow. Really? That's that's actually really surprising. I mean, that's about what I expected. I I mean, hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the. Well, considering the R the R nine is it, or the I forget what the the top essentially the top of the line card from AMD is only like two hundred dollars. It's it, people it, when they do budget builds will go for the cheaper card that can pretty much do high end graphics. With, yeah, but then you've got the ten sixty sitting there with uh, with more. Are they more? I mean, it's about the same price and does a very nice. They're basically fully competitive. Mm, right, uh, okay. Point point seven five percent of people have an RX four eighty, which is the top end AMD card of the current generation. Okay. Compared to uh, the competitor to that, the ten sixty is three point three seven percent of people have that, which is that's not big a, jump. Yeah, well, that big is, jump. Yeah, that is a big jump. Well, what's the? I'm assuming the highest, more common card that people have are 1070s. No, the most common card is the 970. Oh, okay. So that is yeah, and then the 960, then the 750 Ti, then the 1060. 
I the ten seven the ten seventy is sixth. Oh, uh, okay. I'm still confused. Why is the seven seventy Ti like still a super popular and super expensive card? It's not super expensive. Then why is it still a super popular card? Because it's cheap and it requires zero extra power. Really? Huh. Yeah, it's it's fully motherboard powered. Hmm. Did not. Uh, and they just recently released uh, the ten fifty Ti, uh, which is the ten series version of the. 750 Ti that will be fully motherboard powered. Oh, okay. Huh. Basically, it's the small car that you can put in an HTC PC. Um, oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's cool uh, if you want to have, like, you know, a small little, like, I want to build a small little tiny form fitting desktop, but I don't want to, like, have a f card sticking halfway out the back. Yeah, it's basically for, you know, size and power conscious people that want to have a little <laughs> tiny PC under their TV. Right, which is, which is which fine. Is a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. As shown, as shown by the fact that it has four point seven percent of all people that took the survey on Steam. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people use Steam to like buy a lot of indie games, which don't require that high of a graphics uh, requirement or that much of a power processing. Seven hundred and fifty Ti is totally fine for playing games on a TV. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to see what Vega can do, if they can actually challenge the high end again. Yeah, if they do, then it's just like, well, I'm jumping ship for NVIDIA. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty much like, I'm, that's my, um, I only have to wait another day and a half practically yeah. just to hear like, all right, what are you going to give me? And if it's... I mean, you'll probably have to wait another six months until it's actually released, <sighs> but... Okay, if it's, if it, if, it, well, if they say six months, then yeah, I'm probably going to end up getting a uh, NVIDIA monitor. But if, you know, if they say, oh, and by the way, we're going to release this in, th th like, the next month, it's like, pre-order, where's the pre-orders? They're not going to do yeah, that. That's hey, one can, very wishful thinking right there. Again, one can hope. <laughs> let me let me have my little sliver of hope Your here, man. Your little ray of hope? No. Yeah, pretty much. Your <laughs> uh, no dreams for you. <laughs> God. And I'm assuming that was a pun. Yes, it was. No dreams for you. <laughs> it was a pun. Oh my god. Great. I am disappointed. Oh no. <laughs> we we have our Barbara now apparently, I guess. I don't know. Uh we are we all knew I was Barbara from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well I, then, on that sad punny ending. That will uh, oh. Okay. No, continue. <laughs> continue. No, we, yep. Those, yeah. On that sad punny ending, uh, it is time to wrap up and say farewell. Shout, shout out to <laughs> shout out to Moonlight for winning Best Picture at the Oscars. Yes, not La La Land uh, as they initially said. What the hell? They all I Steve Harvey them. <laughs> yes. Surprise. Let's see. What La La Land? It won. Out of all the awards, it was nominated for one. Two. They won three, four. They won four awards. It won, out of like the it won twenty, the ones it was a, it, nominated for fourteen. Um. It won the ones that it should have won. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> the score oh, I take and the it cinematography. Back. It, five, because Emma Stone won Best Actress for La La Land. I, I'm real proud of yeah. that one. She deserved that one. <laughs> she. I, I didn't see enough of the other movies to uh, know if one of them should have won, but she did a good job. And I still... Suicide Squad won an Oscar. <laughs> yeah, we talked about yep. that earlier. Oh my god. Okay, we're done. We're done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. If you enjoyed listening, like, hit that subscribe button if you want to hear more. And uh, yeah, we'll keep keep on keeping on. Thanks for Thank listening. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Thanks, bye. guys. I'm so sorry. So sorry. So sorry. Oh boy.